Most people spend weeks learning HTML and CSS, but what if you could learn both, the entire foundation of web development, in just one video? No fluff, no endless playlists. By the end, you'll know how to build and style websites from scratch, using the same skills developers use every day. Let's get into it. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It might sound like something from a sci-fi movie, but it's simply the blueprint for a web page. We're currently on HTML5, which is like upgrading from an old flip phone to a modern smartphone. Same purpose, but with far more features. You start with a file called index.html. Think of it as the front door to your house. When visitors arrive, it's the first thing they step through. A basic HTML page is divided into two main sections. The head, which is like your utility closet, stores hidden information such as the page title, style sheets, metadata, and scripts. The body is like your living room. It contains everything your visitors see. Inside the head and body, we place HTML elements, the building blocks of a site. This setup is called the boilerplate, and in most code editors, you can type an exclamation mark and press tab to auto-generate it. An HTML element usually has three parts, an opening tag, some content, and a closing tag. For example, a heading might look like this. See the opening and closing tags? That's all it takes to create one element. Tags plus content equals magic. There are six heading levels, from H1, the largest, to H6, the smallest. They don't just control size, they also tell search engines what's important on your page, which is essential for SEO. Tags can also have attributes, which are like sticky notes that give the browser extra instructions. A class, a label used to style multiple elements with CSS, ID, a unique label for one specific element, source, the source of an image or media file, href, the address a link should go to. Attributes don't change what a tag is, they just add extra details about how it should behave. Now let's look at the elements you'll use the most. Paragraphs are like conversations in your living room, blocks of text containing your content. Links are like teleporters, click one and you instantly jump to another page. They use the href attribute to know where to go. Images are like frame photos on your wall. They use the source attribute to find the file and the alt attribute to describe it for accessibility and SEO. Lists are simple in HTML. An unordered list is like a grocery list with bullet points. An ordered list is like a recipe with numbered steps. Each item is wrapped in an li tag. Buttons are like light switches, Click one and something happens. Sometimes that's submitting a form, sometimes it's triggering JavaScript, and sometimes it's just for style. Forms are like your website's mailbox. They collect information from visitors. You start with a form tag and give it an action attribute, which is the address where the data should be sent. Inside, you can have text, email, or password inputs, checkboxes and radio buttons, drop down menus, and a submit button to send the data. Each input can have an ID, so it's uniquely identifiable. Labels use the for attribute to link to those IDs, making them easier to click. Before HTML5, we used div for almost everything, like putting all your furniture into one giant box. Now we have semantic HTML tags like header for the top section, main for the main content, footer for the bottom section, and section or article for grouped content. These tags make your code cleaner, more meaningful, and easier for search engines to understand. Start with the basic structure. Add elements for content. Use attributes for extra details. Organize everything with semantic tags. You now know the essentials, but the real learning happens when you start building your own projects, and I've got something to help with that. I've put together the HTML to Hero Notion Pack which includes 10 real projects, a mobile link in bio template, a progress tracker, and a cheat sheet to speed things up. You'll find the link in the description. And since HTML is just the beginning, the next step is CSS. That's where your skeleton gets its style and personality. Most people waste weeks learning CSS, but here's the thing, you don't need to learn all of it because the truth is there are only a few parts of CSS that matter. CSS is how websites look good. It doesn't run your site, it just styles it. Think of HTML as the skeleton and CSS as the clothes, colors, and layout. You can write CSS directly in your HTML file as an inline style or a separate style block, but it's best to use an external CSS file to avoid cluttering your HTML. And don't forget to link the file or you'll be left wondering why your styles aren't showing up. CSS has only two parts, selectors and properties. Selectors are how you target elements in the HTML. You can select elements like H1, classes using a dot, and IDs with a hash. You can also chain selectors. Chaining with a comma means select this and this. A space means select the element inside of this. And the greater than symbol selects elements one level deep. It's crucial to keep your styles as simple as possible by using a single class name. Once you've selected elements, you apply styles using properties. Styles are applied from top to bottom in your CSS file. There's also something called specificity. More specific selectors get higher priority. So it goes from ID, then class, and then broad tags like div or p. There are a lot of CSS properties, but the two most important categories you need to learn are color and layout. Color is one of the most common things you'll work with. You can change the background and text colors using properties like background color and color. 
color. You can use named colors like red, green, and blue, or more specific formats like hex or RGB. For layout, everything in CSS is based on the box model. Think of it as a box inside a box, and every box has content, padding, border, and margin. You can see the box model by using your browser's inspect tool. This is extremely helpful when debugging layout issues. The content is the actual element, like a paragraph or heading. You can modify the width and height of content using units like pixels, percentages, or rems. Using percentages is great for responsive layouts because it scales with the screen. You can also position things within this blue content box using text align, center, left, or right. Padding adds space inside the box around the content. You can write one, two, or four values for padding. With four values, you go clockwise, top, right, bottom, left. You can also use specific values like padding top, padding right, and so on. You can use pixel values for padding and margin, but rem is a great option too. Rem stands for root M and is based on the font size of the root element. If you change the base font size, it will automatically scale spacing across your entire layout. This is super useful for responsive design. Order comes next. It's the separator between padding and margin. It uses a three-part syntax size, type, and color. Most of the time, you'll use solid for the type, and the color rules work the same as with text or backgrounds. Finally, there's margin, which adds space outside of the element. It behaves just like padding in terms of values and syntax, but it affects the outside spacing. Keep in mind, background colors don't extend into the margin area. The display property determines how elements behave. Inline elements flow with text, block elements take up the full width of the container, and inline block gives you the best of both worlds. Display flex and grid are more advanced tools, but worth knowing. CSS grid lets you design two-dimensional layouts with rows and columns at the same time. But in most of your projects and throughout your career as a front-end developer, you'll mostly use Flexbox. Flex makes it easy to align items both horizontally and vertically using properties like justify content and align items. If you want to position elements precisely, you can set the parent element to position relative and the child element to absolute. Then you can adjust the child's top, left, right, or bottom values to place it wherever you want. You can also create animations using keyframes and the animation property. But honestly, it's better to just Google the animation you want and copy paste the code. If you want those cool effects that you see on other web pages, you can use pseudo classes by adding a colon. The most common one is hover, which applies styles only when the user hovers over an element. To make your hover effects feel smooth, you can add a transition property that defines how long the change should take and what easing it should use. You can take it even further by adding a transform property for scaling, rotating, or shifting elements. Other useful pseudo classes include first child and nth child, which let you target specific elements in a list or container. But unless you need them, try to keep things simple. When it comes to fonts, you can define font styles and sizes using properties like font family, font size, and font weight. You can even list multiple font options to act as backups in case the first one doesn't load. There are also background-related properties, and you can use shorthand to combine them into one line. For example, instead of writing background color, image, position, and repeat separately, you can put them together using the background shorthand. If you want depth or layering effects, try using shadows. Text shadows and box shadows are common, and you can generate cool-looking shadows using an online shadow generator. Lastly, there are media queries that let you adapt your styles to different screen sizes. These work like if statements. If the screen width is wider or narrower than a certain value, then apply specific styles. You can resize your page in the browser to test how your layout responds at different breakpoints. CSS frameworks can speed up your development by a lot. Some popular ones are Bootstrap, Ulma, and Tailwind CSS. The most popular one right now, and the one I recommend, is Tailwind CSS. If you want to learn more about Tailwind CSS, I've made a tutorial on that too. Just click it, and I'll see you there.